I am very excited about this series. We're going to build a website with Twill that features websites built with Twill. I am focusing primarily on Twill and won't spend much time on topics better covered on the Laravel website, such as blade templates or Webpack. In this first episode, we'll utilize the Twill command line to scaffold files for managing a data entity. To configure our form, we'll explore some of Twill's input field options and then start to learn about Twill's use of a repository class for each data module. I've already set up Laravel 7 and Twill 2.0 on my computer. Please visit the episode titled Simple Setup if you need help to do the same. Before we begin, I'd like to take a quick look at our data. I keep a worksheet as a reference for names, data types, and field inputs. Our data model is project, and it has a title, a description, a headline, and a URL. I've also included a few notes to myself about configuration and validation. Twill doesn't require this, it's just a planning tool I like to use. So I'll switch to the command line and run PHP Artisan. We see a set of Twill commands now integrated with Laravel and specifically the command line for creating a new Twill module. Let's run that with a help flag to learn more. We can see that there are seven different options when scaffolding a module. Right now, we're only interested in generating a slug for accessing our data and managing the images that are associated with our data. So I'll use the S for slugs and M for media. Notice that our data type is a lowercase plural. We'll be asked about other options as a double check. They all default as no. When generating a module, I remind myself that there are eight files that need my attention. Some need a little configuration, and others can remain as they are for now. The project's migration file, the project model, the project request file, which handles all validation, the project's admin controller, the project's repository file, the form, navigation inside the admin, and finally the admin route for the project's admin controller. So let's take a look at a few of these. In the migration, we see some boilerplate code to get you started. As a coincidence, the example fields, title and description are in fact the fields we need. So let's add the remaining fields for headline and URL. Notice there's a table for project slugs set for the migration on line 19. The next stop is our project model, where we add to the array of fillable fields, which is pretty standard for Laravel. However, there are a few other configurations we should review. The slug attribute is the field for creating a reference by slug. The field designated is going to have a slug version included with the model. In this case, it's the title. Next is the setting for media. Here we describe image cropping and establish the reference by filling out this configuration. In future episodes, we'll explore this much more deeply, but for now, I'm defining a single crop with a simple setting. The last thing I'd like to point out before moving on is at the top of the file. We pull in the traits that handle media and slugs. It's helpful to visit these files to learn about what is possible when working with Twill. For example, the media trait defines a way to access the alternate text associated with an image, which is very handy when you're building up your blade templates. The slug trait has a convenient method to query your data by just passing the slug. Now to validation by visiting the project request file. Remember my data worksheet? I want to validate the URL's field format. We use the same Laravel validation system and enter our requirements here. Our next two files are the project admin controller and repository. At this time, we do not need to edit them, but I wanted to point out that Twill creates these files as part of the module's CRUD setup. Later, you'll see them in use as needed. Our next stop is the form. Twill has a complete system for building a custom form quickly. As you learn more about Twill, you'll see how impressive this part of your admin can be. We'll be starting simple, but in future episodes, I'll demonstrate some very cool interface techniques for working with complex data. The first thing we see is a Twill blade directive called form field. The Twill documentation is specific about the different types and how they are configurable, but they all usually have the attributes name and label. Let's review our fields. We'll start with an input field. We'll use that for headline, then an input field for URL, We've got the label website URL, and for a placeholder, we show example of what we're looking for, plus a note to remind them to enter the full URL. Then the WYSIWYG. Here we see options through the toolbar. We're just going to use a simple set now, but they're fully documented on the website, so I suggest checking that out. 
And finally, images, which we're going to handle with medias. Notice how it says screen grab underscore desktop. We designated that back in our config file, and that's how we're going to reference that information. The last two configurations are adding the link for the CMS inside the Twill navigation file and configuring the admin route for the projects. Let's switch over to our terminal and run the migration. Now we'll switch back to the browser. I'm going to log into the admin section of our website with the credentials required during the installation. At the top, you can see the menu link for our new content type, Projects. I'm going to create a test project. And just a note that I'm using some Ipsum text for placeholder content. I've set up a shortcut on my machine to insert it as needed. I drag in an image to the media library. I'll adjust the crop a little. And when I submit the form, we should see a validation error because I intentionally entered the URL incorrectly. And we did, so let's fix that. Great, everything is working. I'm going to update the title of the site to match our placeholder URL. At this point, I'm going to pause the video and fill up the project section with some more test content. Then we'll be able to start working with a repository, controller, and routes. As I stated before, I won't be addressing Laravel specific functions, but I'd like to give at least an overview of what we have in place before diving back in and working with Twill. In my resources, Views, I have a folder for layouts. Inside is site.blade.php. And for now, it holds the primary Blade directive for yielding page content. In the directory pages, I have homepage.blade.php. We use this to populate the homepage with specific content. Next is the project directory. And within, we find two Blade templates, index.blade.php, used for listing all projects, and show.blade.php, which will only show one project in its entirety. A page view, essentially, of that project. We'll look at them closer once we start sending data to the views. We'll begin by creating some controllers for the public-facing part of the site. Next, we create three routes, one for the home page, one for listing all projects, and finally, a route to show a single project. I'm using the project's slug as an identifier. We're going to pass that into the show method within the controller. OK, let's create that now. The first thing I'm going to do is get a reference to the project repository, then establish a reference to it by including it inside of our constructor. When I create my show method, I'll pass in the slug. And Twill offers a convenient way of querying the model by using the forSlug method. Unless there is a result, I'll abort the call with a 404 error. And if there is a result, I pass the data onto the project show view. Fairly standard Laravel methodology. The other route for this controller is for the project index page. We need a way of getting all published projects ordered by title. I could write an eloquent query inside this method, but we might want it for other views and pages. So let's create access to the data inside the repository. Already inside the repository, we see the traits for media and slugs. Inside the constructor, we establish a reference to the project model. So really, this is a perfect place to create different methods for accessing the project data. I'm going to create a simple method and call it all projects. And inside, I'm using a twill constraint named publish to restrict the query to data with the publish field set to true. Now back to my project controller to create the index method and utilize what we created in the repository. I'd like to quickly look at the blade templates and then test our two routes. We're going to loop through an array of projects and then we'll access slug as well as image, notice screen grab underscore desktop, and the title. And below, I have a field called domain. Let's take a look at that. The domain field was something I did in the project model. I defined it as an accessor. I take the URL and I parse it to return just the domain. We build a home page view on the page controller under a method I'm calling home page. For now, we're going to return a list of all projects to the view. And we've already defined how to do that. And there's a listing of all of our projects on the home page. I'm going to end this episode here. We covered a few key aspects of Twill's command line. There's still plenty more to explore in our next episode. Thank you for watching.